Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, the vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. Same with iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <coughs> Bear with me. I'm nursing a, a bit of a cold and a raspy voice. Now, longtime subscribers here online know that in last year's Super Bowl, with the Denver Broncos and Peyton Manning favored, I took the Seattle Seahawks. Right? People who bought the pick I posted online for the Sunday night uh, game between the 49ers and Denver know that I took Denver and laid the points. Right? I have mixed feelings about Peyton Manning. Right now, Peyton Manning, of course, is being lionized in the press. There are conversations. I just watched a show on NFL Network where they asked whether he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Right? I don't believe he is. I don't want to sound like a hater. Certainly, he's a great quarterback. Yes, he's earned the touchdown record. But let me just say, if you were to go around Northern California and just canvas people over 40 years old who remember back to the 49ers Roman Empire, I'm just telling you, most of the people would look at you incredulously if you asked that question, and they would say, oh, you mean the greatest other than Joe Montana? Now, let me just say, I believe Peyton Manning is excellent in the regular season. I'll take Peyton most of the time in the regular season. But let's be real for a moment. In the postseason, he had a problem beating Tom Brady, another guy on the great quarterback shortlist, in the AFC Championship Games. With regard to the Super Bowl, understand that Peyton Manning was favored over the Saints and, of course, lost that game. He was a big reason why they lost. He threw a key pick to Tracy Porter, right, in that game. Understand, Peyton Manning, <coughs> in the last Super Bowl, had a terrible Super Bowl against the Seattle Seahawks. Right? Peyton Manning has a losing record in Super Bowls. If you look at the playoffs, too, you're going to find out the teams like the Jets went into Indy and beat Peyton and Indy in Indy in the playoffs. Right now, I believe the problem with Peyton, and let's get away from the numbers, right? Because, again, the numbers don't match each other, right? Different eras have different numerical benchmarks. You look at the completion percentages of great passers, people like Joe Namath, right? First man to pass for 4,000 yards. People like, in a season, people like Terry Bradshaw, right? And those numbers just don't compare to the numbers today. The passing game in the NFL has completely evolved, right? You're literally comparing apples to oranges when you go back through, you know, NFL history and try to look at constants, right? The number of touchdowns in a pro career today simply isn't analogous to the number of touchdowns in a pro career back in Joe Montana's time. More importantly, though, just in terms of leadership, <coughs> a story has surfaced that underscores why Peyton Manning is not, let's say, a Joe Montana. And that's because, well, first let's say the story. After the game, there was an innocent celebration where teammates of his kept the touchdown ball away from him. It looked great, right? It looked like fun. You thought, hey, these teammates take Peyton lightly, right? They're playing around with the quarterback they love. Then, of course, you come to find out 
Now that was rehearsed, right? That Peyton Manning, who really is a micromanager, without, according to insiders, the ability to laugh at himself, right? He doesn't like being the butt of jokes, whatever the public persona, right? Micromanager Peyton Manning is the one who came up with that celebration. He talked to his teammates and convinced them to go along. What looked like a spontaneous celebration wasn't. It was yet another example of Peyton Manning being too much of a control person, right? Now, the problem with Peyton, in my opinion, is that he's too much of a bean counter. If you're looking for a leader, you need someone who's empathetic. You need someone who understands the temperature in the room. With a nod to John Nash and Game Theory, you need someone who's going to look around at his teammates <coughs> and who's going to do a calculus in his head and realize that while mathematically play A might be better than play B, in the real world, your teammates are too anxious. This game is too big. The odds of them blowing play A are too great for you to call it. You need to keep it simple enough where the play is able to be run perfectly given the tension and the anxiety caused by the bigness of the moment, right? Peyton Manning calls so many audibles that I believe it throws off his team in big games, right? You hear these stories about guys going into playoff games or Super Bowl games, and they're amped up. They can't even feel their legs, right? You know, even great players, Thurman Thomas, lost his helmet at a Super Bowl, right? It's different. It's a big moment. You've played all of your life, and now here it is. Playoff game. Super Bowl game. Sometimes teammates need to be calmed down. Sometimes the quarterback can't go to the line of scrimmage and every play start yelling out an audible. Every play start yelling out, you know, Omaha, Omaha. Have his teammates who are already on pins and needles every play listening to the cadence to figure out if the play is being changed at the line of scrimmage. You know what? You can be a great tactician. You can be a master at changing plays at the line of scrimmage. But there are going to be some days when you don't want to do that. Why? Because you're plugged in enough emotionally. Your EQ is high enough where you realize that doing so is going to be counterproductive given the mood. Now let me tell you a Joe Montana story. Right? I believe exactly what Peyton Manning is lacking. Right? The mindset that has him choreographing victory celebrations, for example. Right? Exactly what he's lacking is what Joe Montana had. Montana was in a Super Bowl against Boomer Esiason's Cincinnati Bengals, right? Boomer, Icky Woods, <coughs> and the Bengals, frankly, had the Niners beat, right? The Niners had to go 92 yards to score just to stay in the game. Right? If the Niners don't go 92 yards, then they don't win the Super Bowl. It's late in the fourth quarter. Joe Montana is in the huddle, and he notices that his teammates are hyperventilating. I'm not making this up. He notices that teammates are nervous. It's now or Never. This drive. 92 yards. What a great leader does is what Joe Montana did. 
Montana at that point turned to his tackle, Harris Barton, and he said there, in the stands, standing next to the exit ramp, isn't that John Candy? Barton and the rest of the O-line then gets distracted. They look over where Joe's looking. They see it's John Candy. Everyone smiles, right? The tension is diminished. Montana then proceeds to drive the team 92 yards. That's how that Super Bowl ended. The touchdown isn't Montana to Rice. It's Montana to John Taylor, right? If you or I were wearing a 49er uniform, we probably would have caught a pass on that drive, right? Montana had clarity in terms of vision. Montana used the entire roster. More importantly, though, Montana knew how to calm his guys down. His style of leadership was <coughs> a relaxed style of leadership. Keep in mind, the 49ers had a revolutionary offense at the time, right? It would later be called the West Coast offense. The 49ers were the West Coast that started that offense, right? Understand Montana is doing things, having people like Roger Craig set new records, right? Running patterns for a running back, right? Craig one year had a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards receiving. This is before Marshall Falk, right? The stuff that Montana was doing was breathtaking. But more importantly, Montana knew his team, right? Montana understood that there were times where he had to take his foot off the gas. Not everything was inaudible. Not everything was Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. He understood that at times he had to let other guys lead. It was a team with strong personalities. Even on offense, Jerry Rice, right? Roger Craig on defense, Ronnie Lott, right? Understand Montana understood that he needed at times to let the team lead, right? The 49ers were excellent in the playoffs. Montana, four Super Bowls, no picks, right? There's no Tracy Porter moment. Understand Peyton Manning's already lost two more Super Bowls than Joe Montana, who's won three more Super Bowls than Peyton Manning, right? Montana had few peers in the postseason as a technician, but he also had few peers in the postseason as a teammate, as someone who understood that there were moments where <coughs> guys were going to be hyperventilating. By the way, if you get deeper in the 49er folklore, you're going to find out that during that drive, the 92-yard drive, according to Bill Walsh, the head coach at the time, Montana, who's calming down teammates, himself, during the drive, asked to be taken out for a play because he himself was hyperventilating. Right? Walsh knew it. Nobody on the field did. Because that's who Montana was. So when I'm hearing about Peyton Manning and best ever and stuff like that, look, touchdown records are nice. Right? He's not Montana in the postseason. He's not Montana in Super Bowls. Simply put, he's not Montana in postseason huddles. Right? Pete Carroll last year for the Super Bowl, according to Richard Sherman, dumbed down the playbook. Right? The Seahawks were confident even though they were dogs. But more importantly, Pete Carroll, who understands his team, understood that complexity wasn't necessarily the best thing. So we dumbed down the playbook. Early in that Super Bowl, right, 
Peyton Manning comes to the line, he's yelling out a play. Then, of course, the ball snapped, and he's not ready for it, right? The lineman was probably hyperventilating, was probably hyperactive. The crowd was deafening. <coughs> Peyton Manning, as he was calling out an audible, hadn't figured out that dynamic. He's tone deaf to it. The ball got snapped. Manning didn't get it. There were problems. The Denver Broncos started flat. Right? If you look at Manning's Super Bowl record, you're going to see the team he beat. The Chicago Bears, they were QB'd by Rex Grossman, and they were underdogs. Hardly a juggernaut. Right? So, in terms of leadership skills... While Peyton Manning has the technical side down, certainly pre-snap, Peyton Manning has few peers in NFL history in terms of figuring out the defense and calling the play. But there's more to football than that in terms of leading man, in terms of reading the temperature in the room, in terms of looking at teammates and understanding what needs to be said. In terms of finding a John Candy in the stadium to calm down teammates, Peyton Manning doesn't belong in the same sentence with Joe Montana. He doesn't. Let me go one step further. You know, his boss, John Elway, quite frankly, was more of a leader than Peyton Manning. You know, I'm not saying John Elway had great success in Super Bowls, right? He went to five. He won two of them. I understand the school of thought that says Terrell Davis had a lot to do with his two wins. Right? But make no mistake, when John Elway walked on the field, right, he was alpha. Just like Peyton Manning. Right, but John Elway also knew how to read his teammates. I hope people go back to Shannon Sharp's Hall of Fame induction speech. <coughs> Listen to what Shannon Sharp had to say about John Elway helping him during plays. Right? I don't believe that's Peyton Manning. Right? I believe Peyton Manning is the technician. He's the technical guy. He's the bean counter who can't see past the numbers. He's not the Montana. He's not the Elway. He's not the kind of guy who literally is leading teammates even when the play's not being called. Let me hear from you. Let me point out Peyton Manning's been great to me in regular season betting, right? I love looking at Peyton Manning and, you know, uh, if it's a regular season game and he's at home, wow, he has few peers. When we get into the playoffs, different personality types take over. You know, you'll notice a Joe Flacco in January is a different Joe Flacco, right? You'll notice... Russell Wilson, right? Even when the ship was going down against the Rams this weekend, keeps his head, is a cool customer, can rally teammates, right? In the postseason, I have to tell you, things change. I look at Peyton Manning and I then see too many beans being counted. Not enough recognition of what's going on around him. Revisit the beginning of last year's Super Bowl. See him barking out a long count at the line with a deafening crowd and linemen that couldn't hear him. I don't think Joe Montana would ever be in that position. I don't think Joe Namath would be in that position. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.